Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, everyone. Wa alaikum as salam, I mean. Oh, and you're, everyone. you're the listener. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> What's good, man? How are you? Alhamdulillah. Once again, I've only been up for 20 minutes. Alhamdulillah. It's, uh, it's, how, it's how the life is right now. When did you finish work yesterday? I got home about one in the morning, I think. Which isn't too mm. bad. It's not the latest, but yeah, um, it's been yeah. a long week. Mm. Well, to be honest with you, I woke up in my time zone. I woke up after you, even. Oh, um, <laughs> yeah, you did. <laughs> <was> pretty late. <laughs> yeah. No, you know what I mean? Like, uh, I woke up pretty late because I think for like two, three months now, no matter when I sleep, you know, sometimes I sleep at 1, 2 a.m., right? And I'll just still wake up at the same time in the morning. And I guess that's built up. So yeah. um, just, you know, this one time I just uh, kind of went all out kind of thing. Not really on purpose, but um, I think it's neat. it was needed maybe. <laughs> yeah. Our so, sleep's yeah. quite broken because um, obviously my my boy comes in really early, wakes us up. Mm. And then mm. uh, either... I mean, most of the time it's my wife that goes and deals with him in the morning. I'm ashamed mm. to say, uh, but it's just the reality of the situation. And then, mm. and, um, and then it's first so he's not in he's, he's in his own room kind of thing. Yeah, but he'll just storm in in the morning demanding porridge. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> just to, porridge like, is good. I try and convince him. I'm like, oh, Suleiman, it's dark. Let's just sleep. Like, come on, let's <laughs> sleep. And he's like, no, it's porridge. <laughs> <laughs> nice. What does he have with porridge? It's just porridge and honey or sometimes cornflakes. Mm. He just wants those two in the morning. I've had it where he's literally, mm. uh, like, he'll wake up in the middle of the night, like, not even early morning, just, like, could be, like, 2 o'clock in the, in the morning or whatever. And mm. immediately, as soon as he opens his eyes, he's like, porridge, milk. Mm. I'm like, mm. no, it's no, just go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, kids, man. Kids. Yeah. Just reading actually a, uh, I'm still in the middle of it. I was just reading a little article by uh, Paul Graham. Mm -hmm. uh, you've probably not heard of him. Do you know who he is? No. He's, um, he's one of the founders of uh, Y Combinator, uh, one of the most successful like business incubators in the world. Uh, okay. So all these big companies have been through an incubator is like a, a business. Uh, it's like a, a boot camp, I suppose, for companies. Mm. OK, so uh, you've got a good idea. You pitch them. They're like, OK, that's a good idea. Like we, we can actually help you with it. We think you guys are qualified to turn this into a big business. So come in, uh, f stay with us like they I, I, I don't know you live in the area and then every day for like i think it's maybe three weeks three months or something you go in and they help you with all these fundamentals of the business and then you you at the end of it they might invest in the company as well and then you go off and, and do your thing right oh wow and yeah so uh, there are many incubators now but i think yc was one of the first ones or one of it's one of it's one the, the most known one if you like because like airbnb um reddit um Dropbox, uh, Stripe, they all went through Y Combinator. Okay. So, uh, so they got a very good track record. So anyway, this Paul Graham guy, I don't know how involved he is directly in it these days because I think he founded it like maybe 10, 15 years ago. He's kind of uh, obviously super rich, so he doesn't really need to work. Um, but he writes now and then and, and uh, he's quite smart. So he's writing about having kids and how he never wanted kids and he thought like he, he said I used to congratulate people when they have a child but uh, in, deep down I was thinking better you than me you know All right, and yeah. then he said he said uh, but I've changed my mind completely and he said you know to be honest the, the only reason I changed my mind is because I had kids you know but then mm -hmm. I think he's going to go on to explain how uh, it actually is amazing and he, he I know from a little preview of, of this blog post that basically he says that the freedom I had before having kids, I never used in the first place. And so I was kind of, I had a sense of loneliness, but I had a lot of freedom, right? But then I yeah. never used, I never used that freedom. So why was I being lonely? So now I have less freedom, but I wasn't going to use it anyway. And I have kids, which is great. Yeah. So uh, it's pretty interesting. I'm going to read the rest, Charles. It seems pretty good. Um, yeah, man. Some people have a very... Something? 
I was going to say, yeah, some people have a really adverse sort of reaction when you mention kids and stuff. Like last mm. night, last night someone at work, uh, he's 27, so he's a year mm. older than me. Mm. Uh, and he was just, like, he was so surprised that I had a kid. Mm. Um, mm. So young in his mind. Yeah, yeah, and he was just like, then he started talking about himself, but I don't know if he was trying to hint like of his opinion about me but he was like oh no you've got to live your life and mm. and you're going to have a midlife crisis one day and you're going to realize that you've been with the same woman all your life and you're going to want to flip in ah uh, you can imagine like obviously mm. he's not muslim is he so he's mm. just like and i just yeah. thought oh my god what a shallow life <laughs> like yeah. you're i was like i got i got married i had a children for a purpose do you know what i mean mm. like that was yeah. that was my decision it was i did mm. it for a reason yeah. Um, but to him, it just all sounds like a big accident and a big trap. Mm. Mm. Well, one is best. What do you think is the attitude of British Muslims to having kids at, you know, at, really, it's not that young, like at 25, for example? Um, I, t- I think it all depends on the individual. Um, mm. I think a There's lot no of, average? I don't know what the average Muslim is anymore. Mm. Uh, because okay. I, don't, I don't, like, unless... She, you know, the only Muslims I mix with are the cir- small circle of brothers that I'm close to. I don't... Mm. I'm not really exposed to anyone else, like, on a day-to-day. Okay. But it, I think the average Muslim is probably more going to be what you're seeing over in the UAE, probably. Mm. In terms That's of, the a- yeah, average Muslim, yeah. I, suppose, I don't you think know, there's going to be uh... much difference between the UAE average Muslim and, you know, those in the UK, and etc. I think they're pretty mm, much I more don't, not, That's right. not my impression. No, my impression is that uh, obviously it's difficult to generalize over here because uh, there are many different cultures, right? Yeah. But uh, for example, like Emiratis, I mean, yeah, they, they. Firstly, it's no question like to have kids pretty soon after getting married. That's yeah. the first thing. The second thing is is that you know, I don't think really they're the type that are going to have like just two kids. You know, they're going to have three, four, five kind of kids, you right? Know? Um, and that, that I think that will be the norm for them. Um, in Algeria, funnily enough, like in my experience from my family and stuff, many many people are having three, four, five kids. You know, oh, but really? uh, but when I looked at the demographic data, it showed like the average in Algeria is actually only to have like two point five kids, kind of thing. So yeah, the fertility rate has dropped a lot in certain Muslim countries. You know, in the last few decades. I was told that in Tunisia, people just tend to have two kids and that'll be it. They'll mm. never. I, I want to look that up now. Tunisia. What would you mm. search? Fertility at? rate. Fertility rate. Okay, it's two point zero three. Mm. Yeah. See, Which, that's not even. Repl- that's hardly replacing yourself. Yeah. Apparently, it's a low island, but like I was told that a lot of it is just fear of poverty. Like they don't want. Yes. It. Yeah. Same in Algeria. Yeah. Really. Uh, which is which not is... what should be done, in it? No, yeah, exactly, and and it's yeah. it's a shame, really, because you hear mm. about you just hear about the old times mm. and how you know I think it was the same everywhere. Like people were always having loads of kids, and if they couldn't, then they would sort of look after other people's kids, and mm. it was mm. a beautiful yeah. sentiment. Yeah, Algeria is two point seven eight, so Ooh. leading the pack. Bigger is better, always <laughs> in Algeria, because it says uh, <laughs> Algeria two point seven eight, Morocco two point four nine. And Libya two point two seven, and then Tunisia even lower than that, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. actually, interestingly, it's showing like a graph uh, in ten year blocks, and Algeria's has it went down, so it was at the lowest point in around two thousand and one. Okay, wow. but then since then it's actually gone up and up and up. So it was below Morocco, Libya, right in two thousand one ish. And now it's come up again. Like now, obviously, it's quite a lot more than the other two. But that's this probably because of the civil war. This is crazy. Looking up, uh, um, looking at the graph as well for Tunisia in mm. 1960. Mm. So, like around the time, actually, there was a, forget 1960. It goes up a little bit more. So the year my dad was born, mm. it was about seven. <laughs> Six point nine eight. Yeah. Yeah. And then yeah. so 1966, and then it shot down dramatically over the 80s and 90s and now 20, mm. last data is 2016 it's 2.2 2. mm. that's crazy man what's that about mm. what do you think yeah. that's about i want to discuss that what do you think that's about 
Well, obviously, you know, we we study this in uh, in geography. It's like a it's a whole science demography. Oh, really? Okay. Um, yeah. So, I mean, it, it, what happens is uh, when a country becomes more developed and healthcare improves, then people just have less kids, you know, because they feel their kids are going to survive longer. Oh, uh, right, they, yeah. You know, so they feel they don't need to have as many kids. That's the first thing. The second thing is perhaps I'm kind of guessing this one is that. When a country gets more developed, life gets more expensive. People start moving to the cities, and yeah. then they start, you know, fearing poverty, kind of thing. More expensive to raise kids. I, I wonder how it's measured in terms of. Uh, is it measured by how many people are under a surname? Do you think? No, no. It's um, it's births uh, divided by uh, oh, women. the women who can have kids. Okay. Yeah. Right. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, so okay, like, I understand. You know, average kids per, um, like, fertile woman kind of thing. Okay. So I just don't I, know how, if that account... Mm. The, the only issue I've got is that how much does that account for, like, the child being in one particular family? Do you understand? Like, you'll have... You could have someone that... Oh, it probably doesn't affect it that much, but you could have someone that gets married more than once, for example, or a woman that's mm. married and then divorced and then marry someone else has mm. kids with them do you understand like it doesn't yeah account, i think it, it, it should families. in theory take into that that into account so if she has two kids with one man then get divorced and have two more kids her thing would be four i guess yeah yeah Either way, but it doesn't it's, matter, it's, does it? it's it's in a given year isn't it that's what yeah. we're looking at here so uh yeah i'm looking at the same graph so 1966 you said was the peak for tunisia uh it looks like it yeah, sixty. So oh, maybe sixty-four. Yeah. So Libya used to be the leader in that. So Libya was seven point seven eight. Oh wow! Imagine seven point seven eight being the average. Yeah, oh, this wow. is not the highest. This is average, which means you're going to have families having ten, twelve kids, and you're going to have uh, families having you know six kids. Like you can imagine, if the average is seven point seven eight, the, yeah. the lowest might be five. You know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's so, a lot. Look, yeah. look at like I mean, I, I'm not even going to give you the exact number, like, but my mm. my gran and my mm. wife's grandmother mm. had loads, mate, like loads mm. of kids, like so so mm. many aunties and uncles and stuff. Yeah, but yeah, compare yeah. that to my gran from Tunisian side; mm. they only ever had three, and that was it. Wow. Mm. Mm. See, it's like a lot of cultural factors as well. I mean, yeah. culture plays a role, religion plays a role, and then the the economy and all of that plays a role. One yeah. one big thing that I, you know, I was a little bit surprised to find out is in Algeria, it's very common to use like contraceptive, you know, the pills kind of thing. Mm. And those have some quite, you know, severe negative consequences of taking them. Mm. And uh, of course, it, it just means that the natural consequence of that is you're going to have less kids, you know, because you can control it if you yeah. want more. I suppose the role of a woman in, in those countries have, has seen a vast sort of uh, change, um, at least from my observations, because yeah, if you look a few generations back, at least in the rural areas I'm from, um, mm. women didn't necessarily continue on with their education past like the first few years, really. Um, mm. But then... Now you know you're, you're a lot of women naturally just carry on all the way up into university and then carry on to work, yeah. Uh, and and they're battling mm. the same sort of things that we battle here, where it's mm. like the man and the woman both have to work, and the kid is sort of like. Yes. I suppose the benefit is that families are a bit closer still over there, so you still have that sort yeah. of you know grandparents looking after the kid or whatever, mm. or or extended family looking after the kid or picking them mm. up from school, etc. Mm. Uh, which is kind of I a mean, bit it, lost here generally. Yeah, yeah, because you're further apart and all of that. Yeah. Um, if you think about it, though, man, North Africa is is only, you know, these countries are only independent for, what, 50 years, 60 years kind of thing, right? Yeah. So so what I'm thinking about one of my eldest uncles. He's in his 70s now, I think. Yeah. Um, he didn't go to school. There was no school. Yeah, right? yeah. There was no school. He didn't start school until he was 14, and, and he traveled to to actually go to school you know mm. so he traveled to a whole other place and he had to live away from his family in order to study so it, it was still not normal yani, to to study 
uh, like that, that that kind of full time thing, uh, uh, you know, your whole life, kind of your whole childhood. Yeah. So with you know, even the even the men were not uh, in that zone. Whereas my dad was born much closer to independence, and so he would have maybe grown up in a more normal play way where he's like studying his whole childhood and all of that. Right, I understand. So, I thought that was crazy, man. My my uncle's story is amazing. You know, like um, he used to actually go to Morocco to study because uh, uh, I guess the the destruction of the education system was much uh, bigger and wider and stuff in Algeria versus Morocco because uh, there was the mm. whole war for independence and all of that. And if you think about, it, he was a child; he was growing up when Algeria was still colonized. You know, so oh, he wow. used to. You know, have to try to. He t he told me a story. You know, he used to try to cross the border into Morocco, and he had to hide from people, police, and this and that, and uh, you know, go and study and stuff. And that was only at age like fourteen. So up until then, I guess he couldn't read or write or whatever. And now he's a professor at uni. Subhanallah, Allah ibadik. Uh, colonialism, yeah. man. It's just uh, some of the stories are just yeah. crazy. <laughs> Uh, watching some documentaries and stuff it's just insane what, mm. what our old uh, sort of ancestors or whatever you want to call them had to put, be put through you know mm. bro I've got a question for you why are we obsessed with the past um, because I don't know because what else <laughs> the past is a lot to learn from I think and I think it's a good it's, it's good in terms of having a bit of gratitude and perspective of, of what you've sort of dealing with now i mean mm. i don't really i don't know how engaged i am in current events um yeah. but stuff regarding like the past kind of fascinates me maybe because at least from my perspective i've always felt a bit robbed by not being educated about our sort of history you know okay. like the, the the um history of you know maybe north africa or or mm. middle east or whatever and growing up here you're only sort of taught about the victorians mm, and the world Tudors war two medieval time <laughs> world war two again and again and again which you know yeah. fair enough it's a very important a world event but um there's still a lot missing and, and you know, i had this conversation at work again where uh, someone i was working with had studied uh what was it called he studied ancient history but because of that at university so because of that they gave them free reign to sort of go into whatever they wanted okay. and um I said to him, uh, I said to him, oh yeah, like I'm more interested in sort of Middle Eastern or North African history or whatever. And then he, you know, he was quite educated in the whole thing. He goes, oh, oh yeah, the Arabs, we gave the Arabs a very hard time. Mm. And I was like, oh really? What do, you, what do you mean by that? He goes, well, you know, we went to, we went to Palestine and we started it. <laughs> <laughs> and then yeah. do you know what I mean talking about like the time yeah. of Salah ad and that kind of stuff yeah. he goes yeah we started it we uh, we started killing them and no wonder they got angry and I was like oh okay I'm glad you said it not me <laughs> do you know what I mean but yeah some people you know are aware <laughs> and, it, yeah. and it expands their sort of understanding mm. because I have explained in the parts to certain people that um, for example when people talk about like the motives behind extremists and stuff like that I have sort of yeah. noted that, despite the fact that I completely disagree with any sort of extremist action, the ideology is rooted in a lot of history, um, and mm. it'd be it'd be very redundant to just disregard that, ignore that. Yeah, it, for example, if we were to to talk about ISIS and their ideology, their ideology in terms of all that land mass that they tried to acquire um, mm. and succeeded for some time was based on historical sort of uh accounts of what what was taken from muslims in the past not that it still didn't belong to muslims now but it was like the whole sykes pike broke breaking the borders mm. borders that weren't actually put down by muslims but were put down by the british or whatever and they wanted to mm. get rid of those borders and, and reclaim this caliphate that was destroyed etc um yeah. so yeah there's a lot of there's still, mm. there's still this resentment there's still this sort of and, and yeah. to be fair the whole world has its like at least the underdogs of the whole world have their history with with stuff like that like for example the transatlantic slave trade it still frustrates many people today um the the way that africa in general was um was sort of and still is exploited sort of, uh, yeah. exploited for its resources you know some of the most richest mineral 
uh, rich countries mm-hmm. in the world are the poorest you know what the, what does that even mean yeah um and then things yeah. you know the future is looking a bit interesting uh, allahu alam how much more of the future we have left to live akhi because you know the end times and all of that we how long have we been here since the prophet mm-hmm. sallam has passed you know um so, so that, but like with the yeah. rise of like certain I- ideas like the crypt- cryptocurrency for example um mm. technology that sort of um on one hand technology that's very kind of scary in its monitoring capabilities um, yeah. data collection all of that is quite scary we've sort of touched on that last episode but also yeah. on the other hand technology that kind of liberates people to do a lot more than they could mm. or mm. you know without any freedom gate, like uh, without any what they call them uh like gate holders or whatever what's it yeah called? it's it's a bit of, it's yeah. like an enabler i mean look at like now yeah. actually, compared to not even that long ago people have been doing a lot of a lot of podcasts have been doing like the past 10 years sort of um you know the decade in a review kind of thing and if we mm. think i mean 2010 was technology was sort of kicking off properly then like smartphones and that but the past 20 years bro like the way the world is transformed in terms of an event happens and yeah. you're going to get a high quality video of that straight from the ground pretty much mm. you know within minutes mm. way before anyone else picks it up and it's yeah and even if it's been doctored then the original will still sort of resurface because mm. you know once something's on the internet it's there kind of forever because people just share it and share it and share it yeah um it's it's insane bro it's it's insane so on one hand yeah you've got you've got for example what people talk about now uh like fake news and stuff really mm. frothing up to the surface because people can do have you ever seen those um what are they called face not face morphs deep uh, fake deep fakes that's the one yeah. where they put you know they can literally put anyone's face on any video and make it look very convincing some are more convincing yeah. than others so Crazy. so that could really like tick off but whether it you know does or not i think that's like for me that was like a big thing of uh this kind of you know i can't pinpoint the exact hadith but the general thing of end times and dajjal and people believing the liar and disbelieving the honest person and all of this um i feel like it it's it's coming to happen you know very much so uh, but at the same time, I'm very aware that hundreds and hundreds of years ago, people felt that that Yom Al Qiyamah was coming soon. You know, yeah. So um, we don't know. You know, we don't know. We feel there's a lot. You know, a lot of the smaller signs, etc., have come. Uh, but I think you know why I'm quite obsessed with history, and we're always referring to oh, you know, hundred years ago it wasn't like that, and hundred. I think first reason is because. A lot like the world has changed faster in the last hundred years than in maybe the previous thousand years before that. Who knows? Mm. Yeah, that's the first thing. The second thing is that as Muslims, we take our reference from people who were in the past, not so much people that were in that are now or you know more recent. Like we go back to the Prophet and we even yeah. go back further than that to Ibrahim and everyone, right? So our our hit our religion is very much based in the past, yeah. and um, and you know the Sahaba and all of that. So that's another reason. And then further to that, I think um, because of, because our worldview should be based on on the, those people in the past. Um, I'm very much I'm probably subconsciously always fighting against this uh, worship of of modernism and on modernity yeah. and the idea that everything that is modern is good. You know, yeah. and so for example, when people criticize Islam and they say, "Oh, it belongs in the Middle Ages." Um, that that sentence uh, assumes that the Middle Ages was a bad time and it was worse than now. For example, yeah, yeah. So sure. I don't, you know, we don't, we shouldn't be ex- accepting that notion, that ex- that assumption that oh, Middle Ages was worse than now. Um, in some ways, maybe materially, yes, you know, life was harder. Um, you know, what, food was not as uh, plentiful and all of that for for most of the world. But we believe, I think as Muslims, we believe, you know, spiritually in their relationship with Allah. And I would even say socially and all of that, uh, people were better off, you know, in the past than today. So this that's is, probably why we're obsessed with it, isn't it? Yeah, and I suppose one big argument is that the present and the future are both untested on the in terms of their effects 
on Mm, that's on true. Us. Like we don't know what they're just guinea pigs right now. Yeah, exactly. We don't know what the effects are of what we're doing now in terms of everything. Everything that comes mm. up, we like people that do studies on certain effects that, of things that we eat or do or whatever. They usually they're like, oh, over the past fifty years, etc. We haven't even had fifty mm. years of smartphones. Like, for example, yes. just microwaves. Yeah, all of that. Yeah, 5G. <laughs> so and five G is just like, a few months old. <laughs> in a hundred years, we're not going to be able to account for what does what. Because we've mm. had so much external stimuli yeah. coming in. It could be anything. Yeah. And then when things change as rapidly as they are now, if you if you only start finding out the the consequence of something fifty years later, I mean the world probably has already fully changed by then. So yeah. Yeah, it's, exactly. it's really crazy, man. It's really crazy, man. Um what was I gonna say, man? Uh, okay, so uh, should we we've got that uh, one good question come in by email i think we'll deal with that and then we'll move on to uh, this uh, topic i wanted to cover inshallah yeah yep so um i'll i'll read this email we got a good email from a listener um so this is from iman so salam alaikum warahmatullah i hope you're both well I've been listening to your podcast for a while and have always wanted to give feedback or ask questions, but frankly, I've been too lazy to write up an email. Okay. Oh, no. So um, then she says, um, but after listening to episode 57, this certain topic has been irking me quite a bit. Oh, no. I have realized that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, carry on. Oh, okay. <laughs> what does irking mean exactly, by the way? Irk is like it's irritated me or it's sort of bugging oh, me. Oh, okay. Okay, I've realized um, the a difference between Muhammad and Amin when it comes to the traditional roles you have as parents and the way you view them. I may be wrong, but Brother Amin does seem more detached and has set clear lines when it comes to what his responsibility is as the provider of the family and his wife being the mother and nurturer and the lines not being blurred at all. Brother Muhammad seems to be more empathetic. Sorry, I'm not God. trying to be mean. Uh, to sharing and helping with taking care of the kids, etc. Of course, I know many factors play into this. However, I have a question for Amin. Of course, I'm not saying that the way you think is wrong, but depending on where you live and your circumstances, the responsibilities will sometimes become blurred. For example, as you know, living in London is extremely expensive, and unless you have a well-established and successful job, it's the norm now for both parents to be working in order to provide. And of course... Once both parents are working, it's impossible for the mother to take on all of the responsibilities of caring for her children and the father not to share it. Yeah. Example, when you both finish work and come home, who's taking care of the child? Do you leave this to your wife to do with or do you take turns each day? How would you approach this? And hypothetically, if you were in this situation, what difference do you think this would have on the responsibilities you and your wife have as being both parents and providers? So I'm sorry for the long email. Jazakumullah khairan. So I love this email, bro. This is the exact flavor of email that I love to receive because we are coming on this podcast as people who, yeah, Andy, okay, we try and learn things here and there. We try and observe and think about things, but ultimately we're not, yeah, Andy, we're not really experts in a lot of the topics we talk about. We're just sharing our opinions. And I think what we hope a lot of the time is we're exposing people to alternative opinions sometimes right so that's like the the hope of the podcast but then what i always expected is that people would kind of question uh what we're saying and then that is really interesting when that happens you know yeah so that's why i love this um there's a lot of parts to it uh i i you know i want to say firstly yeah, she says that muhammad seems to be more empathetic um that's what I was saying. I, I've said it a few times is that uh, I have my emotions are less strong. Yeah. So I have less emotional intelligence, meaning my uh, the spectrum of emotions that I can feel maybe is limited compared to other people who have more emotions. Right. And also the intensity at which I feel emotions is lower than someone else. Right. So uh, I, I remember growing up thinking that that's a good thing. Like emotions just get in the way. Emotions make you irrational. And that's like kind of, I, I don't know. I always just thought that. And I used to like insult people by saying you're emotional. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was an insult. Yeah. Now, you know, I appreciate that uh, there are benefits and there are disadvantages, but um, I, I, I fully understand the downsides of, of not having such strong emotions. And one of them is uh, you could lack empathy. I don't think 
I don't think empathy plays a big role in this topic mentioned in the email so much, but I just wanted to mention that straight away that, you know, lacking emotions has, has benefits and it has huge disadvantages as well. Yeah, I think, but at the same time, I think this, this whole platform of podcasting yeah. is quite, um, I don't know, it, it will just show off emotion a lot of emotion being emotional or sharing mm. emotions is gonna have more of an impact on here as opposed to being physically present with you for example yeah. it could be that and my impression is that i talk a lot but i don't do very much whilst you probably do way more than you say in terms of you don't you wouldn't talk about your emotions but maybe you would sh you would show your feelings by your actions in terms of mm. you know if you wanted to help out more or you wanted mm. to do you know you wanted to have a particular role and you would do things whilst mm. i just tend to talk about how i feel about mm. things maybe you know, no, comment. <laughs> no comment no <laughs> comment <laughs> um but yeah like i mean okay so what i would say is that this and the reason i say that is because this is a, lo a quite a loaded sort of um what's the word like there's a lot of assumptions here because mm. the assumption is that me and my my wife both work and because of that i share a lot of the workload with her right like that's sort of what i'm kind of picking up um mm. but that couldn't be further from the truth like my wife does pretty much everything with my son to the point mm. where i messaged my wife yesterday while i was at work and i said she sent me a video of, of my son i was like i feel like i haven't seen him in like a week you know mm. because i've come yeah. home like the other day I wanted to play with him after work and bro, I fell asleep on the floor um, <laughs> and I woke up four hours later with like the worst backache because it was just so oh, rough. Man. And then I went and then I got up and then I fell asleep again on the sofa and mm. then I got up the next morning, went straight to work and didn't see him because I had to do a night shift. So it's a mm. bit, so yeah, you don't, although that's, you know, I might talk the talk and stuff. There is no, um, there is no way two ways around it like my wife's been at home since my child's been born and he's mm. uh he's two and a half now so that's two and a half years bro of just mm. me doing it and and once again th there's another assumption that oh if you're what's the word the only people that can do that live that lifestyle now are people that have got very well-paying job etc you know that sort of mm. thing and that's what was that's said. a good point yeah that's what was said in email and yeah, at first glance, maybe that's true, but the reality mm. is, uh, yeah. that's not what I'm doing. Bro, now. can we let's let's pick this this part apart, yeah? Because I wanted yeah, to go in detail. By the way, I spoke about, with my wife about this email uh, for <laughs> for quite a while, yeah. yeah. And uh, so I want to I want to break this break this down, yeah, because I think it's an interesting topic. The the idea that so she says, as you know. Like it's a fact, yeah? Living in London is extremely expensive. Yeah, fair enough. It's one of the most expensive cities in the world. Mm -hmm. And then she says, unless you have a well-established and successful job, it's the norm now for both parents to be working in order to provide, okay? So yeah. I want to I wanna break this down, right? So uh, I want to work out how much you need to live in a London, if you know London, or we could do um, like another city which is close to London. It's quite expensive as well, like Brighton or whatever, yeah? Yeah. So, so what is rent in, in these kind of places? Let's say you're a family of, you know, uh, uh, you know, parents and then one, two kids. Yeah. You might need, uh, probably need a two bedroom flat, right? Um, how much do you, would that cost? Is that like 1500 a month? Uh, I'm trying to have a look, like average rent. Hmm. Let's see. Average rent London to bed flat. Uh, <laughs> okay. It's given yeah. by area, which is a bit... Yeah, of course, the area is going to play a big role. The area is going to play a big role. I thought maybe £1,500 would be around or about right. Yeah, it's possible. I mean, uh, yeah, oh, God, this is a bit complicated. It's possible. But, like, I've said it. I've had it before. What have you I seen, bro? You tell me what you've seen. This is it. I've, I've said it. I've said what well, I pay for rent down here in Brighton. Mm. And mm. people have, in London have said, well, that's expensive. That's pretty much the same as London. So I don't okay, know so what is that? That's about a grand for two bedrooms. Wow, um, okay. But Great. I don't know. Okay, let's say 1,200, yeah? Yeah, I think 1,200 is probably going to be the idea. Yeah, okay, average. let's say 1,200, yeah? And by the way, yeah, 
uh, just because uh, many people have assumptions about things. I uh, lived in London. Oh, okay. Of course, it was before I was married, right? And I yeah. was able and, and willing to share. Uh, but I shared a two-bedroom flat with only one other person, okay? So it was okay. comfortable, yeah? I was living on £600 a month for everything, hmm. okay? Now, most Londoners would say that's impossible, but I did it and I lived comfortably, okay? So. Yeah. Uh, that's interesting, Annie, when it comes to assumptions and stuff. But anyway, so let's say you're paying uh, 1200 a month for rent, yeah? Um, and then on top of that, let's say, how much are you paying for uh, travel, like petrol and maybe insurance? Oh is that, Tell me about is it. Is that like <laughs> another two, 300 pounds? Bro, um, my insurance is quite low, generally speaking. It didn't used to be, mm. so I'm paying maybe 50 45 pounds insurance every month okay which, yeah which actually well some people some people that's really expensive but to me i found that quite low okay um and then petrol okay let's say 50 pound then yeah you know what let's open mm. up this this app of mine because it because it okay let's see let's go last month and see mm. so for a full month how much i spent on what so transport that yeah. includes parking and petrol and whatever i spent 150 okay. pounds Okay, and that's if you're driving to work. Um, yeah, I don't need to drive to work. Yeah, I do sometimes I like drive. Like a lot of my driving is optional. Okay, like I'll drive really? to London or I'll drive. Oh yeah, yeah. So driving to, to London would make a big difference to petrol yeah. costs. Yeah, yeah. So, so if you were living in London, um, I think if you get like zone one to three monthly pass thing, I think that costs like what was that hundred and twenty pound, hundred and forty pound, something like that. Okay. Uh, so I, uh, so that's similar to what you said, petrol and parking, 150 plus 50 for insurance. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And then, um, let's say, uh, groceries and stuff. Is that like so 250? Uh, I think this is where people probably could save a lot, could save a lot because I've noticed mm. that that's probably after like general bills. Mm. I think that's where I spent all of my money mm. because okay, I don't interesting. necessarily buy things that you could say, oh, I've gone shopping this week in terms of splashing out or whatever on whatever. Mm. Like mm. this month alone, bro, this month mm. alone, mm. my my grocery is, is the top of the list after bills and stuff. Mm. Because I've got, on, I've got the Monzo sort of bank, so yeah. they, they split up everything, generally speaking, quite well. And if they put something in the wrong category, I can adjust it personally. Yeah. So going into groceries, it's mm. saying 450 quid, bro. Okay. Four hundred and fifty quid. And okay. you know what? Going through this list, it all yeah. nothing looks out of place. Like everything looks okay. like it's a, interesting. You know, co op yeah. or Tesco or Audi. And a lot of it is co op. Yeah. Most of it is co op, but because I live next to a co op. Yes. So what happens is that poor planning and mm. and convenience. Oh, yes. we haven't got this, let's go I'll just go next door. I have yeah. I'll just go next door and that's what ends up happening when yes. really we do like a big shop from the cheapest supermarket which is Aldi yeah. um, which is good it's good stuff yeah. for a yeah. decent price um, yeah. like once every two weeks or so right okay so uh, so you're saying but you're saying 450 is a lot right like that's not like you're just going oh, on the minimum for only, for only three of us and not even three like it's two and a half like my son's two years old yeah. he doesn't eat a lot but for mm. only uh, a lot, of, a few of us. That's not very good. Like my mm. my mum is probably going to hear this and she's going to give me a ring and have a go at me. <laughs> <laughs> so should we say like? Um, <laughs> should we but say three hundred is about right? Yeah, because I don't know what happened last month, Achi. Um, mm. Because months before that, it's not been that. So like a month before that, I spent two hundred and seventy. You mm. know, like mm. some okay. months we we. I think this is it. It's just about poor planning. I think Someone when you're tired, bro, after work, you go to to co-op and you just get a load of snacks. <laughs> Do you know what it is? I'll be honest. Do you know what it is? Because the yeah. second highest thing, and I'm not yeah. going to say what it like the, the number was, but after that, the second highest thing was my family category. Now, family okay. can mean anything. Family can mean mm. generally what I put in families, things that I buy specifically for my family that have nothing to do with me. So, yes. for example, if my wife wants... I don't know, a takeaway or something. I will mm. get her one. Not, and I won't include myself. If I'm included in it, then I'll put it in my eating out category. Ah, oh, yes. Good, yeah. So same for my son. If I buy something for my son or I buy a gift for someone or I buy them clothes or I buy whatever, 
Yeah. That's specifically, and I only do it for things that are isolated to them. The moment I'm involved, yeah, yeah. then I count yeah. it as everything else. Okay. Do you understand? Well, you've become very organized, mashallah. But it's it's just, it's good because I can see now, um, I know it sounds bad, but I can see how much, like there's been, God, the month even before that, I spent, mm. I don't know what I must have done this month, but apparently like over a grand on just family stuff. Mm-hmm. Wow. But, but, then it then it kind of gives me a bit of um, understanding as to why things are the way they are, and it gives me a bit mm. of inner peace, really, bro. Because if you can see that your family isn't going without, then mm. actually all these other things that sometimes find their way into your head in terms of a bit of I don't know, not not selfishness, but like self care sort of stuff that kind of yeah. falls by the wayside. You can feel mm-hmm. less guilty about that, yeah, because you know yeah. that. Oh, I'm doing what's what my role is as a man, for mm, example, mm, because mm. I don't know how how many people can can look at their account and and be able to make that sort of um, observation. Mm. You know, yeah, that's very good, man. So let's let's move on. Yeah, let's say three hundred yeah. groceries. Yeah, and then uh, what about bills? I don't really, I'm not really aware of okay, this kind of. Let's go thing. to the bills once again. Bills is another thing that you can. Uh, I've only got two. You see, ago. bills would be higher if your wife is home all day. They'd be higher than if you know she was working, for example. Possibly and your, it depends your what son the, was not home. It depends what they're measuring it by. Because, for example, my water and electric is quite set. The only thing that fluctuates. Oh, okay. Is, yeah, the only thing that fluctuates for us is gas and gas, yeah. because we've got gas heating. Yeah, and gas that's stoves a big one. and stuff. It changes based on so mm, in the winter. Season. Yeah, in mm. the winter we pay like almost three times more than in yeah, the, yeah, yeah, because we yeah. live right on the seafront, so it's freezing. Mm. It's absolutely mm. freezing when we don't okay. put the heating on. But in the summer, bro, yeah. I've got like a top up card thing. In the summer, yeah. I'll pay like very minimal, and it will last me so much longer. But in the winter, yeah, I feel yeah. like I'm doing it every week, topping it up every week. Mm. Um, well, yeah, bills. I think the the bills generally are lower in the UK than here. So, so on average, bills yeah. here, bills I've got, including rent, mm. including rent, mm. is like t- pretty much two grand. Whoa! Right. But that would mean like eight hundred in bills. Uh, yeah, pretty much. No, but you're talking about the winter, right? Well, yeah. Uh, there's things here that I don't really need. To, if we're talking about essentials, then it's not going to be that much. But because there's additional stuff that I pay for every month. Man, I was going to guess your bills is like 200. Well, like council tax alone is 120. Oh, okay. I forgot about that. Yeah. Yeah. My council tax alone is Okay. Let me add that. 120. Yeah. Which maybe would be higher in London, but only maybe by a 50 pound or something. Okay. And then what about um, water and electric and gas? Uh, where is my water? My water's 40. I'm rounding it up, but yeah. 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 Um, my electricity, I've had a bit of a kerfuffle with because i've been trying to switch between different suppliers yeah um my electricity at the moment is about 60 okay so it's like so 100 it, for those two it used to be that i was paying very minimal for my electric mm. yeah um, and then what happened is because i didn't read the small print because i thought i was getting mm. an amazing deal yeah. right at the end of the season they were like oh so adding up all the electricity that you've had matching it to the price you now owe us 200 no, what was it like 400 quid or something like that oh like so they had this set price yeah but then if you go over it whatever that means mm. you then owe them so they just smacked me with this bill out of the blue and i was like yeah yeah got to be joking yeah. how dare you <laughs> <laughs> cheated man <laughs> and then like the other stuff that are in my bills category like what well, i said stuff for the car mm. um the gym which i paid mm. five pounds for which is not really a big deal yeah um that's low. Uh, wow. Adobe Creative Cloud. Shh, don't tell them, bro. Don't tell them. The <laughs> secrets. <laughs> At least I'm not pirating it, bro. Someone yeah. said to me, why don't you pirate it? I was like, bro, I need some barakit in my work. I don't want this. I don't want to be stealing, oh my bro. God. Somebody told me yesterday they paid, uh, without going to details, yeah? yeah. So I was told of someone who's supposed to be Annie. He's committed to Islam, you know, he's got a big beard, et cetera, et cetera. Bro, he straight up bribed someone. He paid someone like £7,000 for something. Oh, wow. Like pure bribery, bro. And I was just like, huh. Uh, 
What's the beard for? I mean, not <laughs> not that, Yanni, of course, you can have a beard and, and sin and stuff. But it's just like, uh, surely it's easier to avoid just paying a bribe than, you know, growing a beard and keeping that up kind of thing. I don't know. I thought keep, keeping away from bribery is uh, relatively easy, depending where you live. Anyway, so... Uh, what we're looking at now, uh, I think we need to add, uh, let's add something uh, minimal, Yanni, for eating out, yeah? So let's say you spend uh, £60 pounds eating out. Uh, let's have a look. Oh my God, what did I do this month? No, but I'm not Bro, talking about I'm you, but I'm trying to uh, get an but, average thing. But this this is highlighting to me that I'm way, <laughs> way above the average. Like, I don't know what I've been doing. <laughs> oh no, I think, I think if you were... If you weren't actively trying to keep this down, then you'd probably be closer to the hundred pound mark, right? Yeah. The average might be a hundred, but if you were trying to keep it down, but you still didn't want to like uh, be stingy with your family and stuff, never take them out and stuff, then you would end up with maybe sixty pounds in a month, right? Yeah. Yeah. That's much. all I'm I mean, guessing. Yeah. A month is a long time, really. Every day is like. I think what's, uh, what's yeah. easy to observe is how much you're spending in a mm. day. Like, if you can go a whole day without spending a penny, then I think you've achieved something. Yeah. Because a lot of the time, mm. you just don't need to. There's so many days mm. where you look back at the things you've purchased that day and you think, a lot of it is going to be food. A lot of it is going to be, mm. oh, I haven't brought lunch with me or I'm going to buy something. Because yes. if you're, if most of your week is spent at work, then mm. at what point are you spending money? It's yeah, you be should those... be making money there, not yeah, spending. <laughs> realistically, but I look yeah. at it and I'm like, okay, every day I've gone to either whatever supermarket or whatever ah, right, because I failed to. That's the killer, bro. Yeah, because I failed to, you know. And generally speaking, like my wife will will prepare prepare a lunchbox for me because I'm a child, but <laughs> but but do that with whatever food we've had the night before, so I can take it to work with me, but because some shifts are quite long sometimes i just i overeat i get hungry more than once bro or i won't be able to make it back to have my lunch so i'll have to get something while i'm out mm. um things like that and then a lot of it is like guilt tripping like oh i will come back home and i'll feel bad that i like my, my dad for example has always had this habit that he can't come home empty-handed mm. like he'll always uh, he's, it's just one of my uh, like earliest memories of my father is just every day coming back when we used to live in Tunisia just coming mm. back with bags and bags of food shopping <laughs> and, like you send him to the shop to get one thing and he'll come back with like 20 and I yeah. don't know why I picked up that habit like I feel mm. bad like I'll go to the right. shop like my wife will say get get can you just get some washing up liquid and some mm. whatever and I'll get that but then I'll be like well they're gonna want they're gonna like this and this and this and this so I'll get all of this for them and you know <laughs> i mm. think that's where things add up i was speaking mm. to um i was speaking to brother musa i don't think you yeah. mind me saying about money and stuff and he was saying to me like bro you just gotta learn to be a bit more not tight but just a bit more stingy so Careful. you can save more yeah so not like stingy people, that's a very bad word that's, that's a bad word yeah, but like yeah. because at the end of the day what is it you're trying to save money for at the end of the day you're mm. saving it for them it's not like you're gathering it to count it you're saving mm. so that you can benefit your family in a bigger ways so actually mm. in the long run you shouldn't feel guilty that you're withholding a little bit of course yeah it's not like you're spending on yourself etc yeah but yeah yeah it's just I, I i have one of my battles is trying to think between having like trying to basically dissect this idea of toekul and mm. I think I often play it out incorrectly where I think that don't worry about the future, twakla Allah, let's just get what we need to get right now, as opposed to mm. planning for the future and twakla Allah. Do you understand? Mm. Yeah, 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 yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Okay, so is there anything we're missing here? Um in terms of expenditure. expenses, yeah. Um I don't know. I feel like we, in order to add flexibility to this, we should add another hundred pounds just in case of anything, you know, uh, for one off costs during the year for unknown X, Y, Z. Um, yeah, I mean, there's, yeah. OK, so let me add this all up. Yeah. Keeping in mind, of course, that uh, this is kind of average. And if you were trying, maybe you could keep it lower, etc. Right. So so we got twelve hundred plus. 150 plus 
fifty plus three hundred four twenty. Okay, four twenty plus um, another two sixty. Mm. So two thousand and eighty per month. Yeah. So we times that by twelve. So after tax, you need to be making twenty five thousand pounds. Yeah, with that those expenses. Yeah. That's more or less. And, okay. and let's, let's not forget, like, people don't make that much and still live, like, still pay rent and still live. And you know, <laughs> whether that's because they're getting some help from the government or whatever, mm. it doesn't really matter. It still oh, makes, yeah. They're still there. Mm. Do you understand? The, 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 yeah. So we, 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 went, we went through this whole exercise in order to kind of play with the idea of do both people need to be working to provide and live? Yeah. Right. And... If you if your expenses are twenty five thousand pounds a year, um, uh, you need a job that pays you. Uh, you know, because we need to take away the tax, right? So you need to earn around thirty thirty k a year. Uh-huh. Yeah, and as far as I know, the average. Uh, let me just uh, make sure. Okay, we're, we're being very scientific with this, mashallah. Uh, <laughs> so um, average salary in the uk i think it's 24k or something uh medium okay it says twenty eight thousand. okay so it's close to that actually so you just need to be slightly above average to for one one person in the household to provide for everything now yes it won't give you the it won't give you a margin of buffer but that brings me on to my next point yeah okay so i, I just i just hoped that we would uh, clarify this because uh, i honestly i think uh it's always useful to question things that are just accepted and assumed. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, oh, I need a degree to get a job. You know, I need to earn a boatload of money to live in London. I need, you know, both parents need to learn, uh, work this. My kid needs to go to school if he's going to be some successful in life, you know. So yeah. these things, even if they're true, it's, it's interesting exercise to question them. Right. And so we questioned them. And by questioning them, you know, you looked at your finances and all of that. And so you, you just get a kind of it's interesting, you know. So I think for me, it shows that. This, you just need to earn slightly above average for one person to only have to work, yeah? But what I was going to, what I was building up to is, it comes down to this, I think, yeah? What is your priority, okay? So let's let's pose this hypothetical question. You know, a couple living in London, they got two kids and um, they're struggling. Let's say only the man is working and they're, they're struggling, yeah? yeah? Now, we could say, you know, most people will say, oh, well, the woman can go work, right? But mm. why don't we say, okay, you're struggling. Go and start selling some drugs on the side. Uh, yeah? Oh God. Go start selling some drugs on the side. You know, there's, there's some downside. You know, it's risky, this and that. But in the end, you know, you're going to get the benefits of being able to uh, afford everything. But a Muslim couple would never suggest that, right? Why is that? Right. Because the priority is the akhirah is a major sin. Yeah. And it's obviously illegal and all of that. So they wouldn't even consider it, right? Most people, Yani, yeah. alhamdulillah, yeah? They would not even consider it because of, because of those reasons. So it, why is that? Why? Because the akhirah and, and, and stuff and not doing major sins is a priority for them. Yeah. Yeah. So therefore, even if, uh, you know, they're suffering, they wouldn't go and sell drugs because it's a priority to, uh, to, to not go into that, that, that major haram and all of that, right? Yeah. So I would say, it starts with the and the, the reason they wouldn't even uh, you know be tempted to do that is because they know the severity of that sin yeah mm. so i think this question it comes firstly the first level is understanding the consequences of having both parents working yeah yeah so i can't go through all of that now and why i think the way i think and all of that but um i think if you looked into the consequences you thought about it then you would get an understanding of the downsides of having both parents working, yeah? And then you go to the next level, which is, what is my priority? Okay, now I know the results of X, Y, Z. Um, what is my priority? Personally, you know, I think many Muslims, the priority is to have a, a, a good family structure, to have their kids raised right, um, to have their kids, you know, uh, having confidence in their religion, learning their religion, Um and and to have their mother, you know, the the mother not compromising herself, having to work in awkward situations, right. um, and all of this, you know. So, 
again, it comes down to your uh, priorities. Yeah, it comes down to your priorities. If it truly, if you've thought about what I've just said, and it's important to you that you keep that traditional structure, and you're able to, you don't have to compromise in a lot of these ways, and you, yeah. you're aware of the downsides of, uh, for example, a woman going out to work, then you would elevate the, it to a level of priority, not the same as the selling drugs thing, but you would elevate it to a point where you're like, look, it's not an option for the, the mother to go out and work full time, yeah. etc. Yeah. You know, I suppose, I mean, it's, it's a bit arbitrary, but the, the, the reality is like when, when a, a lady gives birth here, mm. then they get a very, very long maternity leave. And that's, yeah. that's highlighting that people, people or government or the system is quite aware of how important it is for a yeah, mother yeah, to yeah. be with a child. But then, why is there this arbitrary cutoff point? Yeah, yeah, like, that's oh, true. You need to go back. Well, that's why? Good. Why now? Suddenly? Why does yeah. the child not need his brother anymore? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, true. But you know, speaking about how things play on the ground, mm. I think there. You know, I think bear, okay. Bearing in mind this person's email, mm. bearing in mind what kind of solutions we can offer in terms of mm. just general thinking, there is mm. not not necessarily a requirement for. Woman to work full time, like it could mm. be, it could be maximum two days a week if 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 they wanted to. And there's plenty of mm. jobs that do that. Mm. You understand, like part time mm. or whatever. And if that's mm. enough to sort of take care of groceries, or if you want to pay a part, like in that sort of thing, or if mm. you want just something for yourself, because I think what can end up happening is that you can be so focused. There's two elements, right? One of my one element, and my, my I don't think my wife will mind me saying this, is that she will often not want to ask me for anything because she feels guilty mm. that it's not I know it's mm. I know in Islam her money my money is basically hers in the sense that if she needs anything I, that's not a problem I have mm. no I have no hesitations when it comes to buying things for them but because of her hesitation of asking yeah she will she will go, sometimes go without because yeah. she feel guilty to ask and I think yeah. that's what can happen sometimes and she said it herself because she's come from a background where she used to work you know entirely for herself not having to pay for anyone or anything you know into a family where actually now she doesn't work um and things that we do pay for are bills and stuff because remember if you're a woman going from her your parents house or mm. you know your father's looking after everything uh and the bills are getting paid for and actually you do work so everything you make is basically going to you there's no obligation on you to to pay part of the rent or pay part of the electricity or whatever yeah. as Although with boys, it can be a bit different. I've noticed mm. with boys that do work but still live at home, they may start jumping in to pay for certain things or they may mm, be they encouraged should, yeah. to. Mm. Um, so, but women traditionally have tended to be able to keep their money mm. for themselves sort of thing. Yeah. Uh, generally speaking, generally speaking, once mm. again. Mm. But then to go from that to, oh, now we're living you know, on our own, pay it, there's rent that needs to be paid, there's this that needs to be done, etc., yeah, inshallah, mm. sisters can get a decent man that would want to just try and take care of that himself because those are the things yeah. that are his responsibility, you know. Yeah. Uh, but there's always going to be this element of mm. guilt that comes mm. from the, the woman, generally speaking, that they can't help or they they don't. Want I to think that's a people. terrible cultural issue, Yanni. That's Possibly, a problem. Yeah. You know, I I I know, Yanni. I get the idea of what it's like uh, in the Western context, where it's like. Yeah. There's this idea that, uh, for example, stupid idea that if a woman is not working, then she's wasting her life. She's wasting her education. She's yeah. doing nothing. She's not. You're basically, you know, in the West, your your value as a human comes down to your economic contribution. You know, which is yeah. uh, stupid, right? But um, so uh, I understand that. But that th instead of going along with that, we need to question the idea in the first place. I I know equally. I know other families where the the girls are just given everything they want you know yeah. there's there's no uh, shame in, in the girl taking because she knows she's giving in other ways you know but so yeah. my, my argument is that mm. as a husband mm. it's easier to manage that than what mm. i've just said as the instead of the opposite because what happens is this is just my imagination going now but what, what could happen is like for now in my situation i could always say to my wife don't worry don't feel bad for asking etc yeah and then she will ask but she will always default back to the guilt 
which is yeah, yeah that's why yeah that's why encourage. i would say the solution you encourage that but if yeah. there's the opposite bro if yeah. someone is already accepting of the fact that they're you know they're not guilty at all then they're easier to fall into over asking so so okay. suddenly they're not happy or they can't be content with what they've got so they're yeah, always okay. having to mm. battle between spending too much on things that aren't necessary just because yeah. your wife wanted it <clears throat> understand of course yeah yeah yeah. that's now we're talking about balancing and this and that but i think yeah. for example one solution to this feeling guilty and all of that is uh if you give your wife money regardless of she needs it or doesn't need it you give her a certain amount and she doesn't have to ask you've given it to her right yeah so anyway these are like um now we're zooming in a bit and um i just wanted to first mention the whole thing of all this thing about living is expensive we kind of dealt with that yeah uh-huh. and then we then the point I wanted to make is that it comes down to priority. Like if this is not a priority for you that the mother is is at home and the, and the father's providing, if you don't see that to be important, then that's fine. You know, it's not a priority. You go and do your thing. I I'm the, I live the way I live, and I try to you know have a certain setup because I believe it's the most beneficial way. And I mm. the way like this is a whole ten episodes we could talk about it, right? But um. It's actually uh, this setup is, you know, what you could call the traditional setup. It's it's proven in a way. All right. Secondly, it's more in line with the nature of, you know, the man, the woman and the children. And I believe it's most beneficial for the relationship between all three of them. Yeah. The mother, the father and the children. Yeah. Yeah. All three benefit. It's not just for the kids. The father benefits from his wife not working. And the mother benefits from her not working and her husband working. It's mm. all benefits each other. And it's like the ideal kind of synergy. Okay. Mm. So this is what, like I said, you need to learn the consequences. Then you be convinced whether to make it a priority or not. If you choose to make it a priority, then I believe it's just a matter of doing what it takes. Okay. So then yeah. we could we could go into the what she asked, which was, how would you approach this? Hypothetically, if you were in the situation, what difference do you think it would have on the responsibilities you and your wife has have? Um, mm. Yeah, uh, like she's asking me. Yeah. Mm. So what I would do, this is what I was saying to my wife when I was discussed this. I would like because it's an absolute priority to have the setup where my wife doesn't need to work, and I go and I provide, and my kids get the full attention of their mother, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, then. Firstly, I would you need to get to a point where you're earning what we just discussed. You know, if you yeah. earn an average salary twenty twenty eight thousand, you should be uh, just about okay. Yeah, but yeah. then it's the duty it, because this is a priority of mine. I need to be proactive in upskilling myself so I can start to earn thirty five, forty, forty five k a year. You yeah. know, and that might be a two, three, four year process. Okay, but if it's a priority, then you'll you'll be willing to do it. Right. So it always comes back to priority. If it's not important to you, you want to live the way, you know, a lot of people live in the UK where, you know, the mother works, the father works, you put the child in daycare and all of that, then you do that. But I'm saying it's a priority. I would suggest all Muslims should make it a priority. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And all humans, to be honest. Yeah. And and so what I would do is I would. Uh, I would go about looking at what are the highest high paid, you know, high paid in demand jobs. And bit by bit, I would try to upskill myself to the point where I could get promoted in my same job or I could move into another job, you yeah. know. And it's difficult. Like, I'm not saying it's easy, but what I'm saying is if it's a priority, you'll make it happen. Oh, yeah. And it depends what, like, when we talk about marriage in general and we talk about priority once again that people have different understandings for example saying oh it's expensive to live um it's expensive to to if, if only one person is working it only depends on what that marriage expectation is is your expectation that you're going to travel every year or you're going to go on holidays all the time or you're always going to go out mm. do you understand like this i know it sounds really blasé but this sort of instagram couple sort of marriage yeah. where everything is an adventure all the time 24 7 or hmm. what or is your intention to get married was to basically start a family and that's what the priority is for myself hmm. you know it may differ with other people for myself the only thing i was interested in the only reason i wanted to get like the main reason i wanted to get married was to start a family 
right? That was mm. that was the main core thing. It put, mm. in all honesty, it wasn't because I wanted to have these huge romantic adventures and and mm. have live my life like a movie. You know, that wasn't necessarily in my understanding. But for some mm. people, that expectation's there. Like, yeah, we're gonna work hard and grind together, and it's gonna be like this flipping uh, story of uh, starting mm. from the bottom and together we're gonna be rich and god knows mm. what else and we're gonna be in a different destination every year or every few months yeah um, but you, you you can do both right it is possible but i know what you're saying you're saying priority is, is to build a family but, and stuff this this uh, expectation sorry mm. this expectation is because a lot of it comes from people that haven't had kids yet right yeah yeah, yeah so what true. happens is uh, you know my wife's told me about this i've come across the same sort of stories where uh a, a, a woman will have a child and suddenly she'll realize how much she doesn't want to leave and mm. it kicks in and I remember that mm. I remember that coming happening for my wife bro I remember mm. she, we had my boy and mm. my wife uh, mm. like only a few months later got mm. a job at hospital mm. I remember I used to drop her off there before I go mm. go to work but I remember every morning mm. she was crying her eyes out because she wanted to mm. she missed her son yeah, you know, she yeah. missed my boy, and I just thought this isn't fair, bro. Like this isn't mm. this isn't right. It doesn't make sense because I yeah. remember when my mum had to do the same thing with me to the extent mm. where my mum had to leave me in Morocco and come to the UK and work, mm. and then she had yeah. to do the same thing in Tunisia, mm. leave me in Tunisia and come to the UK mm. and work. And mm. I remember my mum talking about that. Actually, she still talks about it to this day. That it was the hardest thing she ever had to do in her life. Yeah, do you understand? And that that yeah. is that is the sacrifice. It upscaled really mm. and a lot mm. of us come from backgrounds where our parents had to leave us in different countries mm. to come back and work yeah. my wife's the same thing went through the same experience she was left in a different country because that's where grandparents tend to be mm. different countries to be raised there for a bit while the parents came back to the uk and yeah. maximized the income yeah you understand and she yeah. my mom says to me still to this day it's biggest regret of her life she missed mm. the, the the age that my son is now these these pure sort of unforgettable experiences i'm having with my son now my mum missed out on them because she was working mm -hmm. and, she, and, and she couldn't even you know it wasn't like she could come home after work and see me mm. you know yeah so that's why the philosophy kind of carried over to what we've got now in terms of when my wife you know hinted or or had this sort of idea that she didn't really want to miss out on on mm. my son then i was mm. completely for it and I see the yeah. benefits of it now. And I don't mind, yeah, things aren't always easy and whatever. Mm. And it can be a struggle sometimes. Mm. But the reality mm. is, if it's my priority, then it's my priority. Yeah, you know? exactly. Yeah. And uh, I just took a look at, um, so I talked about upskilling yourself to try and earn um, more money, right? The yeah. average salary in London is actually 36K. So if oh. you're average in London, you'll be fine. If you're a little bit above average, yeah, now you easily start going into the 40, 45K, you know, territory. You know, like it yeah. says, on average, software engineer will earn 45,000 yeah? pounds. Uh, yeah. Project manager, 42,000 pounds. So, um, again, it's it's a case of s slowly but surely working towards um, earning more. And, again, if is it a priority? Yeah. The other thing is, again, questioning assumptions is you live in London. Do you have to live in London? Yeah. So you can you can live in uh, other parts of the country and earn maybe a similar salary, but your expenses are a lot lower. Yeah. Yeah. So that's another thing. And then a third thing is, do you need to live in the UK whatsoever? Yeah, because um, I know of places for sure. I'll give you real numbers. For example, you can live middle class, nice lifestyle in Istanbul, one of the biggest cities in the world on uh, in pounds, it would be about six hundred and fifty pounds a month. If you earn that online somehow, whether it's working remotely, freelancing your own business, um, or even setting up a business in Turkey or getting a job in Turkey, then you can live with that small salary. You can live comfortably in Turkey. Um, I know it, you can live in uh, Dubai or maybe Sharjah. You can live on about, hmm, yeah, you you need about thirty six thousand pounds. Uh, to live there maybe in that same kind of thing obviously there's no taxes uh so it's a bit different but again same thing you can live yeah. in pakistan on about again i think maybe 600 pounds a month so 
again, is it a priority? If it was, maybe you would upskill yourself. Maybe you would, I'm not talking to the, the, the woman um, emailing us. I'm talking to the man who's thinking of how to make this happen for his family. Um, you can upskill yourself. You can upskill yourself and maybe move to another part of the country. You could upskill yourself and uh, maybe look to move abroad, whether it's uh, freelancing or business or yeah. remote work. Somebody I heard of just yesterday, he works for SAP, you know, uh, is a big accounting firm, I think, right? Okay. And um, he uh, he just set up a, an agreement with them where he's going to work in Dubai. He's going to live in Dubai. Uh, his job is technically in the UK. He's still paying UK taxes, I think. But... He's living in Dubai, and they yeah. agreed that. So he has an actual kind of nine to five, but he's just working, uh, living in in UAE. So, um, so yeah, there are many options if you make it a priority, and it may take you five years, but it's worth it. You know, if it's a priority, I think it's worth it. Yeah. So that's I my think thing. The biggest struggle is that I think the, the in terms of practicing Muslim sisters, I think generally speaking, I think. Uh, there's no argument that if they were given the option to to not have to work, then I think they would take mm. it, generally speaking. I don't think that's the issue. Yeah, yeah. I think it's finding brothers that are confident that they can take care of their family mm. when, when it comes to like getting married. I think that's what sisters struggle with a lot. I think sisters might struggle with having someone approach them who is financially capable of looking after them. So yeah. what they do is they default to this expectation that they're going to have to work. Because mm. I don't know how many practicing brothers I've met that have this automatic... Like, all the brothers that I know that, you know, I hang out with, and maybe because we're all like-minded, but all the ones that I know don't... They're, 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 their wives don't necessarily work, and they don't have this mm. expectation that she should. Yeah. You know? Um, yeah. So it depends, you're saying, it depends what circles you roll with, basically. Yeah, it does. It depends what circles you roll with. It depends what expectations you have. And, yeah. And I but obviously, know, like, every potential couple will have this conversation, surely. Oh yeah, I think the, the the where we find a lot of sisters sort of falling to is just trying to do stuff from home, whether it's you know stuff based around entrepreneurship, social media, online websites, e-commerce, whatever you mm. want to call it. There's yeah. bits like that. There's things like that, and I think that's empowering. I think that's uh, something that benefits them in terms of yes, yeah, sure. Have your you know th this is what goes back to what we were saying at the start of the whole episode, talking about technology and empowering people. Mm. You know, there's things that. The services that that women need that needs to be run by women for women um, yeah and we can't get around that and that's just reality there's mm. you know there's things like that revolve around even your skills as a mother that we can't like i mm. remember being being uh sent to um what's it uh child minders and stuff right i know mm. that sounds really weak to some people but that's actually an incredible skill like that you can look after kids so why not open your mm. your services to other people you know, mm. who needs their kids look, looking after, for example, mm -hmm. for a few days a week or whatever. That's that's still, you're still getting something that way. This is if you mm. want to be active, if you want to sort of stimulate your mind or whatever. There's all sorts of things. I think we limit ourselves to thinking, oh, I'm at home, that's it, it's the end kind of thing. When Yeah, yeah I'm if, fully against that, by the way. Like, in I know, like, in Algeria, a lot of women do that where they don't at, work and then they also don't do much really at home. Like, they instead of picking up a book they would like clean the floor three times in a row <laughs> yeah um i i'm not like a fan of that i think time is precious for every slave of allah and they yeah. need to they need to convert that time into ajr somehow yeah so so yeah i hope i think there's a very thorough like discussion of the of the of the question i think it, it's really it's really good i think uh, maybe also i wanted to say as well that maybe how rigid i am maybe it's been a bit under misunderstood because i remember saying in one episode like ultimately um my wife has has that kind of main role like as as the mother and and stuff but when when anybody needs help yeah then if she needs help then I, i'll come and help her of course like i'm not like so rigid in that way i wouldn't say or i aim mm -hmm. not to be at least um but of course you got to understand how everybody grew up with certain norms and certain culture right so yeah, what what i took the example from maybe is is algeria where you know i guess i took my model of the family from algeria because that's where when i was visiting algeria i always i just thought this is the way it should be kind of thing i don't know where i got that from but 
and so I kind of modeled off them kind of thing. Yeah. Um, and, and so that's why I've come to this. It not that it's definitely not the only reason because I always try and observe and question. And so I am still convinced after questioning, but you know, I think you gotta, you gotta, you gotta question a lot of the things that are assumed in general. Yeah. I think like, I mean, my model is tends to revolve around my mum and dad a lot. Mm. Um, I mean, they did equally work a lot together, but mm. then at home they equally did a lot as well. There were certain things, and there's still certain things now in my own marriage that I just wouldn't do. My dad was just never done. Yeah, you know, like yeah. my dad. I don't think my dad's ever changed his nappy. I okay, do. I do. Okay, let's not, uh. let's not get it twisted. I do, mm. but it just shows us certain things that, for example, for myself, I yeah. having this conversation with my wife. Actually, I was like, mm. I've never, I'm never going to clean the toilet. Like that's just. Mm. In terms of like bleaching it and get, you mm. understand what I'm trying to say? Like, yeah, look, I mean, I'll clean it after I use it. <laughs> but, yeah. yeah, but yeah. in terms of like doing all the bleach and all of that stuff, like I've never mm. done that, and I don't think I ever yeah. will. Mm. My dad has never done that. I don't think mm. we ever will. So, mm. it, but what it, about the opposite question? Go for it. Like, I personally, I do, I actively do not want my wife to help me in my like main role. Yeah, you know, you don't, oh, you yeah. never actually hear that kind of discussion. Well, this, like this was the argument that sort of devolved because I said, oh. um, you know, I said to I said to her that there's certain things that I do that you're never going to do. You know, mm. I said you're never going to step mm. out and 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 do a, an hour or two in my job. Mm. That's never going to happen. Like that's accepted, oh. especially mm. my job. So yeah, this is something we. But have the to thing accept. is, I think you. The thing is, I don't. It's not just that. It's that you wouldn't even want her to, even if you were, if it oh, yeah, yeah, hypothetically, yeah. she could help you. You don't want yeah. her to help you. You want her to just do her job, and you'll take care of that, even if it's difficult. Yeah. And then there's middle grounds. There's things that we both mm. do. For example, like yeah, like, yeah. Like I said, my dad, when my my dad would always be in the kitchen, like or more, mm. be helping or whatever. Like that was understood. Yeah. That was just what I grew mm. up knowing. So mm. if I'm asked to maybe cook dinner one day, or if I you know see she needs help or whatever it's accepted you know yeah and there's yeah. things that naturally just just happen i think people worry too much about this i don't know if you know i don't know how realistically these things are discussed before getting married i don't mm. know about yourself if it was ever discussed mm. your i think it's a bit uncomfortable for some isn't it yeah i mean for me it was as far as i can remember it was generally quite understood i think and Allah knows best but I think, if anything, I remember my wife saying that she was surprised at how different our families were in terms of how much men may have helped in my family mm. as compared to hers. So, okay. And I remember there was that big difference. Like, I think, I don't know if it's an Algerian thing, but judging mm. by sort of cultural differences, uh, there is more of an expectation that men don't do as much in the house as a woman mm. does. Um, yeah. Whilst It's husband, definitely more, yeah. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Like, but it's also the other way where maybe a woman wouldn't want a man to step in the kitchen. Like, that's an insult. Like, that's my territory. Yeah, it could be. It could be, especially if there's people around. Yeah, I mean, yeah. we play out very differently when there's other mm. people around than we do when <laughs> there isn't. You know, mm. yeah, so there's yeah. an element of respect there, yeah. an element of sort of keeping yeah. a good image of yourself or whatever. Mm. But it should. Yeah, I don't think yeah. that should matter personally, because. I will, yeah. I don't. I don't know. I think we. I think basically, ultimately, let's bring this back to the core thing, which is please and Allah subhanahu wa taala. And mm. I think, I think a, a man should remember that anything, he, any act he does for his family is, is charitable, and he'll be rewarded for it. And the Prophet Sallallahu did used to help around in the house. And that isn't unknown. Mm. But yeah. you know that wasn't his primary goal, mm. his primary mission yeah. in this dunya. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. As By the way, to... I looked into this uh, hadith. Okay, uh, the Aisha was asked about the Prophet said, and what they used to do at home, and then she said, "Kana fi khidmati ahli." He was yeah. at the service of his family, right? Um, and I looked into it, and what some of the scholars have said, Yanni, yeah, what I found is that uh, they, they, she actually listed a few things he would do, uh -huh. and. I, it's a long discussion, but I think uh, it's taken vastly, I and mean, it's taken out of context. Oh, to, oh no doubt. It's made, I've it's used, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's used in the Western context, it's used to uh, try to make it out that he was, um, you know, changing nappies and washing dishes and cooking. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, which, which was not the case. In fact, 
uh, it's, uh, she lists a few things he used to do. One of them is milking his goat. One of them is fixing his sandals. One yeah. of them is... Uh, it, it, uh, there is one narration that says he would uh, knead the dough, knead the dough yeah. sometimes. Um, and what the scholar said anyway that I read is that they said basically he would do general things that a man would do at home. Yeah. Right. So yeah. the point of the hadith was not... It's not what I understood. The point of the hadith was not to say that, oh, no, no, he he wasn't doing nothing Exactly. Yeah, yeah. at home. The point was actually, if you read the whole hadith, uh, because at the end she says, and when the prayer, the, the adhan came, he would get up and leave. Yeah? yeah. So the point is that what she was trying to say is that he was a man like any man, yeah. and he would be in the house like any man, and then when it's time for prayer, he would get up and leave. Yeah. yeah. And so that's, that's, that was what she was trying to convey. Let's put mm. that into what today mm. or what we would consider our general duties that are associated with a man at home. All right, mm. put mm. work to the side. There but it's going to be based on the orf, isn't it? The culture that you're in. Yeah. Oh yeah, but like, what I, yeah. what I'd argue, I mean, a lot of our cultures mm. are similar because we grew up mm. in similar mm. environments. But like, you know, DIY things like putting up a shelf, okay, repairing yeah. something that's broken, right? Uh, doing the garden if you've got one. Like, yeah. You don't want, you know. It's, it, it, you'd want to do that yourself uh mm. certain sort of I, don't know, I know it goes back to repair work or whatever but like mm. even like cleaning the car i mean let's not forget the car is something mm. that the, the whole family make use of so it's something that can't mm. necessarily be neglected or whatever like maintaining mm. that vehicle is serving yeah. your family as long as you're doing mm. it for as long as the, the main purpose of that vehicle is for your family and you're not just joyriding mm. it all the time showing off mm. because you've got a nice mm. car on your own you know yeah. but things like this you know they get over yeah. there um, yeah, yeah. Even uh, and also, like, like, let's say your wife is cooking and the the baby is crying. Oh, you yeah. know, she's she can't do both at once. Oh, you know, exactly. so obviously, you know, obviously you're gonna. Standard. Also, it's very important for fathers to spend time with their kids and yeah, stuff like be, that, uh, etc. Yeah, mm, and and that yeah. time is valuable. And that's that's yeah. a given, bro. That's a given. Yeah, my yeah, wife's yeah, in the yeah. Kitchen yeah. cooking. I'm automatically yeah. with my son. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. normal. Yeah. Normal. So. A lot of this, I think, it's just navigating some of these modern uh, phenomena, you know, like living and life being expensive and this and that. Um, but I think it's we only, dealt with it pretty well, man. It's only ex the thing is, it's only expensive if your desire for more can't be tamed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't think earning thirty thousand pounds a year is an issue somewhere like the UK. You know, there's so many opportunities. Yes, some people are more disadvantaged than others. That's true. But if the average is earning 28,000, then, you know, if you put your mind to it and you make du'a, then... It's just... A lot of it is it's just going to be why you want to make more money in the first place. It's mm. is, it, is, there, is it aligning with your priority of al-akhirah? Mm. Or is mm. it just because you've got this culture in you of mm. I need to be better and I need to earn more and I need to show that we're moving forward. What does mm. moving forward mean? I think people people mm. get worried about being stagnant. For example, I've been stuck at the same salary for such such and such years, or yeah. I've been uh, I haven't made any progress. Or look at so and so. He's he mm. started when I did, and look where he is. And do you understand? Look where I am, and I'm still stuck here. And blah blah blah. I think that's what's the, the issue that's irking people more than actually. Mm. Does it matter if you're mm. stuck in the same, and I say stuck in quotes, in mm. the same sort of um, position for, I don't know, hypothetically, 10 years, if spiritually you're making achievements? Mm. Because that, that, yeah, and you have a good relationship with your family. Yeah, that position you're in is allowing you to, I don't know, mm. at this present time, study, memorize Quran, serve your family, mm. increase your knowledge of the deen, etc. Because... Unless your financial increase is, at the end result, you want it for serving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, pleasing mm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, mm. why, I don't know, making hajj umrah whenever or, or funding some sort of project that you have, whether that's internally in your family, like investing in your children or, you know, charitable, work, charitable mm. works or whatever. If it's not solely dunya related, then fair enough, mm. you could say, yeah, you should be aiming to... to to mm. sort of try and earn more and stuff but if actually mm. right now in the situation you're in your spirituality mm. is increasing and you're still making strides then mm -hmm. that should be your priority really mm. but yeah I know it's best yeah 
so just making sure we answered everything. How would you approach this? If you're in the situation, what would you do? Why for Oh, she, so she asked if basically me and my wife were working, how would you split up the responsibilities? I mean, I just wouldn't, I'd really do all I could to not be in that situation. What can I say? I would really, like I already said uh, the, some different options. I am willing to move country to avoid that. Wow. I'm willing to learn a new skill. Like I'm willing to start learning software engineering to avoid that i'm willing to do ex like i'm willing to do a lot to avoid that situation so yeah. inshallah i wouldn't end up in that situation um, i think that's because yeah. you're quite proactive in that sense i think i would end up defaulting a lot quicker than you <laughs> Maybe. but it shouldn't be it shouldn't be that it shouldn't be but i probably would but i like i think the most i would default to is what i said earlier which is um definitely not full time yeah. yeah yeah Maximum that's true so yeah that's another point is like it doesn't have to be black and white like she's full time or nothing yeah. as well because yeah. i just I, I remember having this conversation with her the other day where she said oh, do you feel guilty that i'm not working or whatever i said to be honest judging by the amount of work that you have to do in the house now yeah right if i came home and that work wasn't done by either of us and then we had to do that work mm altogether mm. then we'd never see each other again mm. it's a false economy isn't it because yeah. you gain one thing and you lose another yeah and we the, the problem is you got to measure life i know i'm and by the way i think we've been a bit um defensive i don't know we i think we're we're speaking like she's attacking us i don't think she's attacking us at all she's not attacking but, us she's attacking yeah, yeah. you <laughs> oh yeah, me. <laughs> nah, I, I don't feel attacked. I just, uh, I, I feel like uh, basically the the mainstream culture is one way, and it's it's a big mass, and I'm like yeah. pushing back at it. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm answering in this way. Um, huh, what was I gonna say? What was I in the middle of saying? Man, I can't remember. Um, you said part time. Uh, it's not black and white working full time, part time. Uh, yeah, that's it. You don't measure life and the the quality of your life by income, do you? It's a mixture of things. So you might, like, that's what I was saying, false economy. Yeah, so you might gain money, but then lose time together, lose um, your kind of a spiritual state, your mental state. So you just want to balance things up and keep the priority being, obviously, the akhira and all of that. And, you know, personally, I'm 100% convinced that the structure of your family will directly link to your akhirah. I fully believe that. So mm. that's why, you know, it's priority. You know, I was thinking as well, Muhammad, that maybe just the one difference between me and you is maybe we do equal action, but I just keep my, like, standards and goals high, even if they seem unrealistic, yeah. you know? But I think I think you're a hard worker, bro, and I think that... Uh, you would never struggle financially, inshallah, because uh, you just work hard. And anybody, uh, especially like in the UK, you know, somewhere where there's, there is decent opportunity, anyone who works hard, they'll be fine, inshallah, you know. Yeah, so I think, you know, I default to doing what I have to do, despite the fact that, you know, we've spoke, I've gone into many times in this in these podcasts about how difficult I find work sometimes and have done in the past. Mm. Um and I've had this conversation with our own family who say, oh, just quit, just leave. I'm like, well, no, I can't do that. Why would I do that? I need to provide. Mm, yeah. Do you understand? Like some people would just quit and that would be it. And, and they would accept that. And I, I can't. It just doesn't make sense to me. Yeah, that, yeah. You know, it doesn't, it, it just doesn't compute that you would give up mm. on a, on a um, challenge mm. without replacing it with mm. something either equal or better. Mm. It, it doesn't yeah. make sense to me. Um, despite how hard things could be. But, um, yeah. That's my job, bro. That's my role. That's yeah. what I'm here for. <laughs> so, Allah reward you. You know, in the Jumu'ah last you know, Friday prayer in the khutbah, he mentioned a hadith of, uh, I'm trying to recall it because I remember reading it before and then he reminded me of it in the khutbah. It's yeah. basically a man was, he was like digging something or he was farming or something like that. And then some of the Sahaba went past him and they said, uh, Something it's something like you know why are you like wasting your energy on this? You could just go go to fight fi sabilillah, mm. and you know. And the Prophet Sallam corrected them. He said, if he's doing this for his family and to earn a living, then it is fi sabilillah. Like it's yeah. the same as if he's going to fight. So uh, I remember that as uh, 
it's a good one to remember always my my advice to brothers is with that in mind is to just have that intention there i mm. think that can be lost a lot of times mm. i think um it's easy mm. for brothers to to sort of regress back into this kind of going back to what we were saying earlier when i talked about that colleague of mine to have this sort of midlife crisis and then think oh i haven't done anything for myself or looked after myself or kind of i don't know having this sort of oh missing the bachelor life nonsense Mm. you know Mm. when actually what did you get married for in in the beginning Mm. i think brothers seriously like if you're listening to this seriously if you're thinking of getting married then please have that intention that you're trying to start a family and you're trying to look after a family not because you just want a partner um, Mm. because that just wanting a partner is a bit shallow because once you've achieved that then what then Mm. uh, then everything else technically just looks like it's getting in your way do you understand Mm -hmm. what i'm trying to say yeah if you're if you're having a family and having kids and looking after them doesn't appeal to you then Mm. don't bother Mm. honestly because what what you end up doing is just damaging that that blessing of yours Mm. Mm. i think the the way it needs to be seen you know and i was writing something about this the other day the way men need to look at it is it should be your pride your pride is to provide for your family you know Mm. to protect them if need be and all of that and equally the woman's pride is to you know, raise children that do great things and raise well-mannered, committed uh, children. They're committed to, to Allah, you know, and uh, and to, you know, again, it's, it's it should be her pride as well to to have a very presentable, tidy house, you know, mm. and all of these. This is your pride. Yeah. Do something to, that you can be proud of, you know, not something that's just fun or enjoyable, but something you can ultimately be proud of. Yeah. And um I think that's something that maybe has been lost a little bit, you know. It's like, oh, if I can avoid working and still make money, then yeah, let me do that. But what happened to, you know, feeling the pr- pride and it's like, this is my thing. I did it, you know. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's a lot to be said about that, man. Definitely, bro. There's, you know, some of the, the uh, most amazing moments is, you know, honestly, when you like shut the door behind you after saying goodbye to your family and knowing that you're going out for a purpose and then, that moment where you put your keys through the door and you you come back home mm. knowing that you've you've been out for a reason for a purpose mm. for this family that you're returning to and then seeing your kid like excited to see you every mm. day bro like my son just freaks out when i get home like when i put that <laughs> key through the door and i step in mm. like you just hear him like shouting my name and yeah. and this it, it's an amazing feeling and that's what keeps you know that's what reminds me every day of this mm. is why i'm doing this like i'm doing this mm. for them and a lot of those best if you know that experience is, can be uh, emulated by, a, by mm. a woman at home and I, ideally it should be ideally it'd, it'd mm. be great if they could see what they do at home as service mm. to their family yeah and maybe you know, just close off with this this thought you know, that i think a lot of what we talked about today is up to the man you know yeah and a man needs to lead his family and and be proactive to whatever level he has to be and he needs to make his wife feel like you know he's he's providing for her there's no harm in her needing things from him the financial things she's offering something in the, in the in the family and he's offering something and um ultimately you know what you know you should the men you know you should you should be doing what you can you know trying your best not everyone will achieve it let's be real yeah but you should be working to yeah, yeah put yourself in a situation where you know your family's com- your, your your wife is comfortable you you you're able to uh, you know afford things and um making your wife feel that she can ask if she needs and all these things you know it really does often come down to the man so it's something to to ponder on isn't it hmm. okay got to go to salah and i guess you got to go somewhere too so the man never oh, never uh, interrupted us today but i think my son was uh, was a uh, causing a bit of background noise so uh, he did, um, that... i heard your son so man did open the door mm. and then i sort of saw a glimpse of him and then someone must have kidnapped him yeah <laughs> so yeah. alhamdulillah, really, man. alhamdulillah. <laughs> okay man uh if, if anybody has any further comments you know on this or any other topic then really appreciate if you get in touch with us like you heard in this episode we can really it's really good it's really um 
what's the word, it spurs us on, it gives us a lot of content to talk about when we get these kind of questions and comments. So please uh, contact us, uh, go to mindheistpodcast.com and you can either email us or fill in a, a what's it called, anonymous question. And um, we haven't asked for a while, but if you're listening on uh, the Apple podcast, then drop us a review, inshallah, let us know what you think. And uh, yeah, any last words, Muhammad? Um just be 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 good <laughs> I don't know be good boys and um, girls yeah be good boys and girls look after each other have a good intentions and, and be grateful one last thing actually is just if you are in a marriage and your husband is working his, his, his butt off then just say thank you for everything you do for us it makes the world of a difference bro like when my wife thanked me mm. for being at work and stuff it literally just transforms my day mm. i think i think yeah. that's what can be quite dark sometimes is that maybe a man does work his ass off and he just unfortunately maybe doesn't get the thanks that he'd like not that he mm. needs thanks but it just makes a big difference and same mm. vice versa bro vice versa if a man can come home and say to his wife you know what you've done a great job today thanks for this and this it just it's gratitude mm. bro and if you don't thank the people, then you haven't thanked the lost parents. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I think that's something women need need a lot, man. Like, uh, I, I think men men thank their wives enough. Um, maybe vice versa as well. But, yeah. Okay, bro. Let's close it off, inshallah. And, uh, yeah. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika. Shadu an la ilaha la anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayka. Assalamu alaikum wa everyone.